For almost a decade on my TV show, Interview with Ed, I've been interviewing extra-dimensional beings and consciousnesses from a number of different realms. Many of my questions have been answered, but with every answer comes more questions. Join me on my ongoing quest to find out who are we, why are we here, and where are we going? Hey guys, all right, we have Ryan here. Hey Ryan, how's it going? Um, hey gues, thanks for having me. Hi everyone. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, just wanted to wanted to introduce you and here we are. We've got you as a guest and uh, would love to hear your story. I think many of the folks on the call and the membership here are going through a similar journey and awakening to their channeling um, abilities and your story's unique but familiar. So I'd love for you to <laughs> share. <laughs> Introduce yourself and, and, and tell us how you got started in, in the wacky world of channeling. Sure. <laughs> yes. Um, so I like to just thank everyone for being here and trusting with the space. And thank you, Ruben, for trusting me with the space as well and giving this opportunity to share my story. Um, and I see actually a couple of familiar faces from when I went to the C5 event. Mm -hmm. um, so hi to all of you again. That's right. Um, um, we have Mark was there. There's a few familiar folks that were there. Um, yeah, and let's see. Uh, so, you know, to speak about my journey and to share it, it, it is an honor to share it with all of you. Um, it first started with uh, Reiki. Right? I was um, getting my certification, becoming a Reiki master. Um, and then Reiki was introduced to me by my sister. And that was when I had my, I guess you would call, you know, the, the spiritual awakening. Um, that was when I really felt so much energy going through my body, so much emotional releases. And so from that point, I knew that there is definitely more than what we see from a physical plane. Um, so from there, I pursued my Reiki's master certification. Um, and then I began, you know, doing Reiki and also offering Reiki to people for free to hone in on my skills and practice more and more and tapping into that energetic field. Um, and then, you know, as being a practitioner, you want to keep bettering yourself however you can. And suddenly, you know, I got this hit and this notion that I should be really starting to deepen my practice more. And that I should actually just sit in darkness and be with myself in complete stillness. Um, so the more I resisted that urgent idea, the stronger, of course, it began to come back. Uh, so there's one day where I just said, okay, like, let's, let's just do this. Um, and at the time, I was living in my garage room with my parents. And so I just turned off all the lights, put a, a small candle in the center of the room. And I began to just start going in a very deep meditation. Um, the first time I did it, I felt just a lot of energy begin to come around me. And I feel this was the point where I felt that, you know, the guides or energies that are wanting to work with me. They want, this is when they were seeing that, okay, like, let's make some initial contact, so to say. So this is where I had the first experience where I felt, you know, like hands laying on me or someone just kind of like lightly tapping me on the shoulder. And I kept telling myself, you know, not to be fearful, not to be scared. These are just energies that we cannot see and they're wanting to make contact. Um, so it was, I feel like that was my first initial test, so to say to see if I could understand what it is to have energy around you that you cannot see. Um, and then from there, the next couple of days, I did the same process. That was when I started feeling a lot of energy start building up around my throat and my mouth. Um, and at the time, I didn't know what that meant. So, you know, of course, when we are fearful of something that we don't know, we are automatically, we're just trying to suppress it. And so that's what I ended up doing the next couple of times is I just kept suppressing the energy and trying to push it down. But of course, you know, each time I tried to push it down, the stronger it kept wanting to emerge over and over. 
Um, it got to a point where anytime I tried to meditate, even if it wasn't even darkness, the energy would just want to come out. And at one day, I just finally said, okay, I'm just going to allow it, not be fearful of it, and let's just see what happens. Um, so as I sat there, that's when I began um, toning. And I just kept toning for like hours and hours and hours. Um, and it felt good. It felt refreshing. And each time I got out of it, I felt I was so much more centered. Um, I was a lot lighter. A lot of the energies I felt that were maybe heavy around me just felt like it dissipated. Um, so I just continued with this practice. And then from there, all of a sudden, you know, I felt my mouth and my lips wanting to move. And it started becoming almost uh, like uncontrollable. Because every time I tried to pretty much like clamp my lips down, more and more energy would want to come out and it would just start almost like a quivering um, sensation. And so from there, I said, okay, let me allow this again. And what I started noticing was that I was making kind of like the vowel sounds. I was going like, whoa, we, we, oh, whoa, we. And then I said, okay, let me allow this a little bit more. And soon enough, it was like fragmented words. Um, and then just like fragmented sentences were starting to come out. Um, and at the time, I had no idea what channeling was. And I, it was something that I was not seeking as well. And so I was reaching out to my Reiki teacher, which I'm very thankful of, which was very supportive at the time. And she was like, oh my God, I think you're beginning to channel. And so I said, I, you know, I have no idea what this is. And she said, you know, don't worry. Um, you know, just make sure you ask for like the highest good, the highest energies to come through. And she's like, don't be scared and just allow it and always ask, you know, she's like, you're always in your own power and just ask. And so as I started to do that, then that's when just full-blown senses started coming out. Um, and I, it was the first time I experienced where it would just be like a pouring of inner dialogue would just come into my head. And then it would be, I would be repeating it. And so I started asking, you know, who are you? Who's wanting to make contact? And at the time, too, I was very unfamiliar with like Star Seas, the GFL. And, you know, I started saying like the, the name Ashtar, you know, Metatron. And I was like, what the heck is going on? You know, like, and I, I really thought at one point, I was like, oh man, like this is it. I think I might be losing it. Like, uh, until, you know, I, of course, I was very thankful again. I had a supportive um, teacher and some of the community, my rape geek class and they're like oh no, no no like this is ashtar this is the gfl um this is metatron and then they're like you know check out this person's channeling it was a very similar story um so with that it was very comforting to know um like you said ruben right everybody's story is unique but similar um so as i started to learn about other channelers who they're channeling how their journey started I began to feel a lot more comfortable and started to trust myself with it. Uh, and then from there, I formed a small channeling group to practice the, you know, my skills and to ensure that it was always a safe container. Mm -hmm. um, and that consisted of my Reiki teacher, my partner, my sister, and one of my very close uh, friends from our Reiki community too. Um, and so we were meeting up, you know, once a week for almost half a year before I began to slowly start leaking out publicly where I felt comfortable enough. Mm -hmm. And, and it was a very good testing grounds because I got to experience a lot of different energies and how sometimes these energies can take a toll on your body physically. Mm -hmm. And so I was very thankful to have that container to help, you know, with managing the energy. Um, almost pretty much like providing support or like medics in an energetic way. Um, Can we get into that then, for a second? I, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, of course. I'm curious. Um, what, what, 
physically what what was going on what were you feeling that was sort of taking a toll or oh yeah um so as i began to channel you know more energies i started to feel like my body was shifting from like different frequencies and vibrations very quickly and at times i would feel you know where i would I thought I would be channeling for only five minutes and then turn out to be an hour, vice versa. Mm. And when I would come out of it, I felt very drained, um, like as if I almost, you know, just ran a marathon. Right, right. Okay. Um, And then I had to get used to what we associate with, like, you know, the ascension symptoms, your body um, integrating, assimilating all the different energies that are coming through. Mm. And so there would be moments where I would feel like my heart was palpitating very, very fast. But then when I actually physically touch it, it was still at a normal heart rate. And so I had to get used to how it affected me on a physical um, level. And that was where I began to, you know, start asking, what can I do to prep myself better and become a better vessel? And that was when I was getting a lot of information of, you know, you must treat your body like a conduit for electricity. So it's like, you know, you want to be taking care of your physical part, the the nutrition, um, the daily discipline and grounding, meditation, and clearing of mind. Uh, And so those were like, you know, the things I learned and the symptoms I experienced while, you know, learning to channel more and more. Well, maybe they were, uh, sort of also uh, uh, a checklist to keep you in check for uh, for making sure you're you're tapping into the highest energies possible. Yeah, um, that was a a message I got reoccurring as well. Right, right. So it was like you know if you're gonna be the example that they used a lot for me was like electric conduit. Mm-hmm. If your body's gonna be muddy and murky and kind of dirty, you're not gonna be the best vessel. Right. to channel these energies and to connect to as well. Yeah, I recognize that in you. I recognize, you know, just in our brief conversations that you were still developing, still doing the work. And as everybody is, most of the, I think uh, all the channels that I, I reach out to and try to have on the show are are of the stance that there's still, you know, inner work to be done that nobody is, you know, oh, I'm the... I'm the head of the channel and I don't have to do any personal work anymore and it's all good. Uh, I, I try to, st- if anybody says that, I try to go the other direction. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's good. Yeah. It was, good. Um, yeah. I know like one of those things where, you know, that I really started to believe and that I felt right as I see other channelers and then experience the different um, energies coming through, it was, you know, to, say you're so-called, you know, a master or veteran of channeling, Mm -hmm. the way we describe it, it's like, that means you understand that you never know anything and you're always constantly trying to improve. And that's like the mastery part is you are committed to this, to always ever improving yourself. Sure. Um, Yeah. And so it's like, uh, like I tell everyone, it's, it's an infinite journey. It's an (laughs) infinite journey. Absolutely. So what were some of like the first energies that were coming through did, that, that actually had names or maybe that we're familiar with here in, our, in this group? Uh, yes. Yeah, so the first one um, to make contact was Metatron. Uh, and then after that, it was Ashtar um, and then Anubis. And okay. that's when I, yeah, um, Anubis was one of the first very early energies that um, I made contact with. Um, and then from there, it was like the Hathors, the mm-hmm. Sky Grandmothers. Sky- uh, and then... Who, who are the Sky Grandmothers? Yeah. Uh, so the Sky Grandmothers from what I was asking and what I can understand from channeling them, it's, like a, it's basically it's a collective of a lot of what we would say like ascended masters. Okay. So... And the Sky Grandmothers, it's a whole collection of them. And then what they do is they embody this persona that they call the Sky Grandmothers. So they... It's like a a council? Yes, yes. Very similar 
to that? Did they um, did they give you a number or or just uh, it's just a group consciousness? It was the number I kept receiving was three. Oh, okay. So it's yeah, not- so the, it was three from when we did a lot of our channelings. Um, but what they were wanting to understand us to understand was that you know even though right the what we were feeling was a number three, but each energy has been collected by so many other different consciousness okay. that it's hard to say, you know, it's like just three. Uh, Cause when you feel into them, you just feel so much of the knowledge and how much that they have been through too, as right. well to get to this point in their understanding. So like three different collectives merging into a larger collective. Yes. Yes, exactly. That's like the perfect way to put it. Awesome. Awesome. So I guess my question is, as these different energies are coming through, and if you don't have, I mean, they're giving you names, but if you don't have reference points for like, in for me in doing the show, I have tons of reference points. Oh, we talked to that guy, this guy, and this guy. And you start to sort of build a library and a resonance of the frequencies and archetypal uh, resonance in a sense. How how did you uh, feel or determine the different um, resonances with these different energies? How would you identify them or start to categorize them in these ways besides them giving you the names? Like if you were to put a feeling to it. Um, so I, a lot of the learning process for me, because I'm, I'm not visual, so I don't see too much. Mm-hmm. So a lot of it was just trusting my feeling and what I felt around me. Um, so there were moments where certain energies were feeling very, very cold. Um, I would suddenly feel a lot of cold energy around me. Mm. And then immediately that energy would drop in. Uh, so I started to connect, you know, the dots, so to say, um, in my own way with my own experiences. Yeah. And there would be times where I would feel, you know, immense amounts of energy where I felt like something was propelling me upwards. Or there would be energies where I would feel would be anchoring me down a lot. And so that's um, what I had to go off as reference when I was, you know, beginning to build these connections was just purely going off of, you know, what I could feel. Well, what would be, for example, how do you feel when you're channeling Metatron compared to the third, to the grandmothers, to the uh, sky grandmothers? Oh yeah. Um, so like when I was first connecting with Metatron, I would feel an immediate, like, like someone was covering me with energy, almost like a blanket. Uh, so it was almost like a very like nurturing energy to almost let me know, like, you know, Hey, it's, it's safe. This is a safe container. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then with the sky grandmothers, I would feel just a lot of immense energy just rushing from the base of my body up to my crown. And so when I was feeling this, I would ask, you know, okay, like who is making contact or who is tr- wants to. And then, so then when I would receive the names, then I would, you know, slowly try and connect and remember what it felt like as they were initially making that contact. Well, when we were at giant rock that time, you know, Elizabeth, well, gave her sort of downloads and i had i i had intuitively thought about the hathors and i don't know if i mentioned or whatnot but i think you had, you had popped and said oh i could ch- yeah i can channel the hathors and i'm like what okay, okay let's do it. it so um what was you know what's your mechanism to make that connection how do you pull them in to 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 channel that uh or was that energy already there and you were just tapping into it how, at that time how would you like make that conscious decision? Uh, so I think at the at that time, um, yeah, it was actually uh, my partner Jessica who was just like, "Oh yeah, like you know, he's he's channel person four. Oh, that's right, um, that's right. She she said that, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, I got put on the spot there um, right. a bit. That's right. And so when you know that happened, I just had to check within myself. Okay, is this uh, a connection that wants to be made with me? And so when that was happening, I just sat there for a moment and just fell within myself. 
And I asked, okay, like, is this what wants to happen? Mm -hmm. The connection wants to be made. And immediately I started hearing the name, you know, Hathor start popping up in my head repeatedly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to just check and reaffirm, making sure, you know, it's not my ego or anything, you know, I kept asking and feeling into it. And then that's when I started feeling like a presence of energy starting to surround me. And so I said, okay, I think that is the confirmation that they want to connect. Mm -hmm. I'm like, there is something that they want to share. Mm -hmm. And, you know, from how they do it, it's like, okay, let me go tap on him, Ruben. Let's see what we can kind of get going here. Sweet, sweet. When you were making the transition or you, you started Reiki, I think many in our audience are probably familiar with with Reiki and and basic Reiki practitioners. You know, it's kind of it's kind of like Qigong. It's a little bit different. But do you do Qigong as well? I, did I ever ask you that? Or no, I, I've actually never um, practiced it, but it is very similar. Very, very similar. similar. Um, I, I noticed when I've gone back and forth. I feel Reiki is more of a heat energy. Uh, this is for me where there's heat coming from what I do Qigong, but it's more physical, magnetic energy, sticky, where the Reiki seems not as sticky. It's more uh, heat. That's how I would determine it. I'm sure everybody has their own different ways of determining it. Going from that cosmic heat energy, however that works, I haven't done it enough to really get super familiar with that energy. I'm more familiar with the, with the um, Qigong. But how did that transition into the channeling? Like, what were the signs? Yeah, I meant, um, so it was definitely like the, the energy I started feeling the throat. And then what I began to notice was that when I was doing Reiki sessions, um, it just, the channeling wanted to start coming through. Okay, so you're working with somebody on the table, doing the shoko ray and all of that, mm-hmm. all, going through all the parts of the body feeling where you feel that heat and then uh and then it was an additional like physical yeah. sensation okay yeah it was like you know i I'd, I'd be doing it you know i'd be feeling where there's like dense pockets of energy and i'm like hearing it out and then all of a sudden i would just start getting this inner dialogue in and at the time i was like I was like you know not not right now like i'm just trying to do you know i was trying to do reiki um, and yeah, and then, so that's when I started noticing it was wanting to come in more and more and, you know, with the people who I knew who were very familiar with channeling or, you know, or somewhat part of it, I, you know, made sure of course they were comfortable with it. And I was like, um, you know, I, I feel like there's a message that wants to be passed through. <laughs> so I said, you know, are, are you okay with it? And so as I was doing the Reiki, I would just start. Um, channeling basically Mm -hmm. and what i was starting to notice and discover was you know how they say like words have energy words have vibration Mm -hmm. to it i was starting to notice that it was kind of combining on its in its own way to help clear either the energy or you know there'd be certain messages that they'd be getting and that would actually help with the clearing of you know certain emotions or energies or things that maybe were stuck in them. And that would actually, I noticed, would actually help release it too as well. Yeah, I mean, Reiki is releasing the energy, but uh, when you can sort of have a dialogue with somebody and help them, you know, walk them through some of those emotions, then that's that always helps. Uh, yeah. So uh, so you, you mentioned your Reiki teacher was familiar with channeling. Uh, had, did your Reiki teacher have any favorites that, he she was it, i don't know mentioned yeah um yeah she's actually um in the chat her name's uh queenie they, oh okay queenie okay i see queenie here yeah um yeah her her favorite was that i got introduced to was cryon okay yeah the elite Old carol school. yeah yeah um so I, the the first thing she was just like you gotta listen to cryon this just listen to this and you know like you'll be good yeah yeah, yeah. awesome yes and and that resonated like his process and what was coming through yeah it did um because of the the process was similar to how i was channeling 
So to actually see that and then know that that was part of some of it with my process too, mm -hmm. it was like a way of confirming, okay, I'm, I'm not, you know, making stuff up. Like there's similarities going on. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I always ask too, I was like, what I always have to, why am I channeling my eyes closed all the time? Like, am I not so allowed to see? Right. Yeah. What is it? What was the answer for that? Uh, you know, I never got an answer. I was just like, I guess, you know, this is just the style or what my body is comfortable with. Are you an open eye channeler or there's a few, you know, Nora Harold, she channels the eyes. Um, Pamela, who we're going to have on next week, she, she has her eyes open half and half. You know, some people do. Lisa has her eyes closed, but she kind of figures out some way to still like right on the board, but you know, half vision kind of thing. It's uh, everybody's got a different way to do it. Yeah. I was like, maybe it's like a, you know, advanced technique to have your eyes open. Uh, I don't, yeah, maybe we'll get there someday. <laughs> Mark has a question. You want to hop in, Mark, and jump in here? Um, yeah, Sarah Landon, she talks about that before. And, and she says mostly just to, uh, um, and like, and I know like from, from Zen and stuff, it's just, uh, well, I, having less visual distraction, um, to, to help keep your mind calm. And <clears throat> so it's not absolutely necessary. It's just usually, it's just generally makes it easier for you. And, uh, but for her now, um, there's a, she's doing a, a channeling with the group now and she will act and instead of having an assistant monitor and pick who's going to ask questions and stuff, she actually starts doing that. And so I'll see her, she'll open her eyes and she'll periodically, uh, look at the zoom group to see who has their hand up and who's going to be next and stuff like that. But still, she generally keeps her eyes open, but she can open them. And, and there was somebody else too, another, another, uh, channel friend of mine that, um, Actually, I think ended up channeling while she was driving. And uh, she said, it's definitely not uh, not the go-to <laughs> type of thing to do, but yeah, that, yeah, uh, I wonder if that as you get more used to it. Uh, driving under the influence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the influence of higher energy. Sure. Right, right. You're like, help me get out of this ticket. <laughs> Well, yeah. So use, use discernment and caution, everybody, when you're, uh, yes. channeling where, but whatever your method is. And thank you for sharing that. Um, so if, yeah, and, uh, and we'll open up for questions. If anybody else wants to ch chime in before we, uh, get into the channeling, um, and we can always follow up afterwards, uh, but I, I'll sneak a couple more quick questions in here before we get there. Um, is there been in your journey, how long have you been doing this now? Sort of publicly right. or even with the, I guess, even with the private sessions? In total, um, you know, close to two years now. Okay. Yeah. So, so you've years. been able to hone your, your, your method a little bit on how to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely, you know, practice now. It's like I have that your own method, so to say, of starting to, you know, drop in and then beginning to connect. I noticed you and use tones like, like Rob does. Mm -hmm. Is there a specific, um, group that usually comes in first? Many of the channelers I've talked to have sort of a, a go-to person or group that then depending on where the questioning goes, then they can reach out to other other, like I'll use Rob as an example. Again, he made the connection with Trev initially. And then from there, he would then start introducing Metatron and other energies. Yeah, the, it seems to be different depending on, you know, the stages where I'm at. And then also I've noticed the group either I'm channeling for or the collective or sorry for the individual. Right, right. So lately in the, the co-channelings that I've been helping facilitate, Cryon has actually been coming in a lot. Oh, wow. And then, yeah, yeah. Um, that was definitely a shocker when I, that energy came through. I had to ask, you know, what, how, 
How's it that I am channeling Cryon? Right, right. Yeah. Um, Can you explain that? How is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I'm curious. Yeah, so I know for anyone who's a big fan of Lee Carroll, you know, there's no disrespect to him or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, so I asked, you know, how is it that I'm able to channel Cryon if there is someone out there who, you know, is channeling Cryon's energy for so long? Mm -hmm. And so when I asked this question, they're saying that, well, first you have, we have to get out of that notion that a channeler is like attached to an energy, like that is their go-to. So I was like, you need to remove that out of your mindset and to remember that, right? What you're channeling, there's no physical limitations. Everything is energy and it's infinite. And so they're saying that when you are on your journey, there's going to be certain energies that will come through and you make contact with because of, you know, the vibration and frequency you start being at. And so you are connecting to that energy or consciousness. Mm -hmm. And during, you know, a certain period of your journey, that is the energy and consciousness that is going to aid you and guide you on what it is that you are setting out to do. And so that was, they're saying, you know, that is why there's so many people who claim right, they are channeling uh, Metatron, Ashtar, the GFL, different Octarians. And it is because it's like, like how we just say, it's like the eye cloud or the internet. Mm -hmm. We are tapping into different parts of that consciousness. And what we are setting out to do, they're giving us that part of it that is going to aid us in the best way. So... Yeah, same. I've mentioned this before. There's been a, a few different channelers for Bashar. And uh, mm -hmm. and then so we associate, you know, when we say Daryl Anka is being the most famous, but when we talk about the other versions of Bashar, we sort of associate, we say like Daryl Anka Bashar, or Andrew version of Bashar, or, you know, Ayako Sekino's version of, you know, we don't even say the version. We just say first name Ayako Bashar, you know. Andrew yeah. Bashar, Daryl Bashar, you know, even uh, uh, Roxanne, I don't know if she's on the call yet, but uh, she's channeled, you know, uh, Elon and uh, um, and other Sasani beings uh, and Bashar sort of rolls in there sometimes. So it's, uh, you know, making that that distinction because it's still it's still different. It still has, you know, that personal whoever's channeling, it still has their um, flavor to the bigger flavor. Yeah, if, if you it's like, talk. right, everyone, there's a lot of people that can make, you know, pasta or pizza. But everyone has their own little specialty to it. I like that. Yeah, totally. Um, I, I have, man, I do you, based on the energy now, do you have like an idea of who might want to come through for, for this group? Is there, I feel the, as I was starting to feel some energy, um, mm -hmm. definitely Seems like Ashtar wants to come through and then perhaps Brian as well. Cool. Um, do you want to start getting into it? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to start um, settling in and, okay. and getting into it. Because, you know, based on whoever comes through, I've got, I have tailored, a few tailored questions. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and then, and then we'll do a follow-up at the end, uh, when you come, when you come out, is that okay? You, you, you seem to last time kind of snap out of it pretty quick. So you, so you, we could do a follow-up questions with, with you at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's um, no problem at all. Okay. Sweet. What you do thing. Um, and then just for everyone who's on the call, uh, I usually start with a bit of toning. Um, and then also. I know sometimes when the channel messages come through, I didn't, sometimes light language has been coming through as well. And I know everyone is affected a bit differently by it. So if you know, if you're someone who might be affected a lot, or it might be, um, even sometimes a bit emotional, it, you, you know, just always hold the intention that you receive the messages, how they are, um, especially from energetic state, you know, you want to the intention you know if you want to receive it with ease so that way your body can take it in a bit better or if you're more of like you know rip the band-aid off type person you know, just 
dial it up however you feel most comfortable. Um, so just a reminder, you know, you always have control of that too as well. Thank you. Awesome. All right. So and we'll go ahead. Sort and of moderate the questions as people come in. I'll, you know, so you don't have to look at any hands up or anything like that. I'll do all that stuff for you. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you. Yo. Hey there, if you like this broadcast and want to join us live each week, come over to the Interview with Ed membership portal. The links are down below and you too can join in the conversation asking the channel's questions directly uh, and the beans at the channel. And we have a bunch of other offerings. So come on over and hang out with us. It's a great community. See you there. Is I, Ashtar, as I have returned again, bring you a message. You was called Reuben and those in this container. At this moment, there are many of you that may feel much turmoil and internal conflicts within yourselves. You're looking at the world and wondering when things will change and when we can also say, wake up from this matrix. I know that you all want to help others to raise the frequency and the vibration of the collective so that we can usher in this new earth energy. We want so badly to help our fellow humans, star seeds, and light workers. We see and feel the pain that each of us carries and how that extends to those we love and those we have connected with. This is a moment where you must remind yourselves that each individual that has contracted to come here has their own path and their own journey to walk. For we are merely guides for them. There is still free will that is given. And all we can do is plant the seed and give guidance and nurturing when it is best needed. But we cannot do the work for others. What you can do is to continue to do the inner work within yourselves and ensuring that the decisions you make have intention to align with your highest path. And in doing so, each of you 
is to emit a frequency much like a stone being dropped in the water. That rippling effect begins to echo outward. People feel it. They may not say it, they may not acknowledge it, but they feel it. And there are times when you are within yourself feeling joyful and just pure bliss. That alone can trigger someone within your space where they see that you are happy that you are doing what it is that you love. And so they lash out at you. And you wonder, what did I ever do? And in these moments, this is what you have contracted. You were that catalyst and that trigger for that other person. There's something inside of them made them feel small, insignificant, not worthy, or stirred up all those emotions of unworthiness. And these are the moments where we must remind ourselves that we cannot do the work with the individuals. But we can be a guide and offer space. As I know, some of you may have encountered such conflicts. And when you're in awe, not knowing how to respond, you must first remind yourself not to react, but to understand that how they reacted is merely a reflection within themselves. And what you do is just take a step back and hold that space for them. And perhaps merely a simple, I am sorry for what you are going through. I hope you find the peace within yourself that you are seeking. It can be enough to break the cycle, to stop it, to suddenly snap them out of it. And that is how we can help our fellow humans by being that guide, being that mirror, without having to take on that burden of being a savior. Where there is always much work to do. So remind yourself to overstress yourselves, overstretch yourselves. The best way to help raising the vibration, the frequency on this planet is to begin within yourself. And each of you here has such special tools and gifts. So when we work on ourselves, that light that is within us, that star is ready to shine. It will begin to beam out more and more. And thus, contributing to that collective energy. And if you find yourself at moments where you feel the work is getting too much, There seems to be no end. And no matter what you do, continuously struggling, hitting a wall, I encourage you to 
continue forward. Whereas when we are just about to give up, to let it all go, that is when you're just about to make the next jump, next step in your journey, that breakthrough moment. Where you see, when you're becoming more and more aligned with what it is that you feel that your purpose is and your highest path, you will have to let go of some of your so called older selves. And those who are with you. People, the environment, they may not like that. And that is when you feel that the pull downward again becomes the hardest. And so if you are feeling that or in that position, do not give up. Keep believing in the path that you are choosing where you know within your heart space that it is helping the collective. Continue to march on, to move forward. If you feel your thoughts become very scattered, clouded, Go back to your practices. Go back to the basics. And there, you begin to center and ground yourselves yet once again. So I thank you all, all your continuous hard work. We thank you for it is a collaborative effort. Yes. Thank you. I feel like you've been talking about my day, my daily life <laughs> every day of late running into, uh, that exact scenario that you just described of knowing how to create space or hold space. Uh, and, and I was going to ask. Are they kind of one in the same holding space for someone else is essentially just making space sometimes giving a little distance between, uh, um, someone that we may have conflict with, uh, so that the problem can be, uh, organically, uh, fixed, not fixed, but, uh, transmuted. Yes. This is where the micro macro perspective comes into play. Or when we are in conflict with someone, if we are always in that energy, we never have space even for ourselves to step out and take a moment and look at the situation as a whole. And at times, we want to help someone so much that we forget. It is about their journey. It is not what we can impose. It is not our say to how fast we can move someone on the chessboard. Everything happens with divine timing. And as you care for someone who you are trying to so-called wake up, look at things from such a different view, we must always remember cannot force it, but then we become that energy that we were not trying to be. And so stepping away from the situation, giving it a moment for both sides to breathe, we are then able to come back to ourselves, perhaps even reevaluate the situation and see if we approached it we felt was the best 
or perhaps there were different ways to go about it. And by providing distance between the two energies, you're able to give those energies time to calm themselves so that they are not always ready to fight and be in conflict. And now they begin to be in a space of receiving yet again. It, it's almost like when you're, you know, you forget something and you, a topic or a situation and you're trying to remember the name or like somebody's name, like, what is that guy's name? What is that? What is that? And as long as you're trying to think about it, you can never remember it. And it's like when you take a break and you go do something else and then the name pops in your head. <laughs> yes, that is a perfect analogy. Awesome. Awesome. I had, um, since we have Ashtar on, on the line, so to say, uh, what I'd love to know a little bit more about Ashtar is Ashtar a collective or an individual? We are both. Oh, we are an individual from this point of view. Mm -hmm. Yet Ashtar itself is a collective consciousness. There have been many that have been adding to this energy and this consciousness. So to say, a hub. But to make contact with those here is best and easiest to show up as an individual. And therefore, making it easier for those who are becoming vessels and channeling to connect. So when we typically see when our collective consciousness on the internet, you, I think you type in the words Ashtar and you kind of get the typical blonde haired, uh, Palladian looking guy in a, in a blue jumpsuit. Is, is that a, is that an accurate representation of, of what the Ashtar, the, the individual would, would be? That is an accurate representation. How it began to appear to individuals so that now a connection can be made easier from a visual point of view. As others are beginning to connect based on the person as well, that appearance can change. For we are always trying to visualize and change our appearance so that we can best connect with that individual, something that they are familiar with. And so because this image of Ashtar has become somewhat popular and generalized, so it is easiest for us repeatedly appearing as this image so that more and more able to decipher easily what energy they are connecting with. I see. In, in, there's a famous case in 1977 uh, in a British broadcasting where uh, a signal was interrupted and um, during a, a regular TV show and a voice came through for about six minutes that, uh, declared himself virulent, virulent, uh, represented, uh, by the body known as Ashtar Galactic Command. And there was a, a beautiful message that came through about, you know, stepping away from wars and, um, you know, planet earth needs to sort of move in the direction of, of, uh, peaceful, um, ways of doing things, getting connected to uh, uh, nature and that sort of thing, or, or else there would be some sort of circumstances, not in a threatening way, in a loving way, but uh, it was quite a, a powerful message that a lot of UFO researchers like myself like to reference because of the data sets that are left behind. Any, anything to say about that? Was that this particular energy or is that something else? 
that is a different energy of Ashtar. Okay. What we can speak about it is that it is, of course, yes, not threatening way of saying things. Mm -hmm. It is a cautionary tale, so to say. Mm -hmm. It is guidance on that humanity must stop dwelling and submerging itself in these lower energies. At that time, the ego was taking over much of the energies here on earth. We had to remind that we must go back to acting and speaking and moving with intention from the heart space and not from the ego. And that is when we begin to ponder about how I can always be ahead of the other person, how I can be number one, how I can have this, how I can have that, and then forget that how is it that I can create with others, how I can collaborate with others, how is it that we can bring all together. And that is when we referred to being out in nature yet again. But when you go out in nature, you see a soul designed in such a way that there's so many species living together. And that there is when there is conflict within nature, most of it is out of necessity. So that is why we had sent that message out. I see. And does Galactic Command uh, or Ashtar uh, work with any particular? Groups or or uh, other galactic beings that we're familiar with, the Palladians or Arcturians or um, these sort of energies. Yes, we work closely with Palladians and the Arcturians. Okay, all right. <laughs> I guess I was Zetas at all. Do you guys interact with those guys? Not too much. <laughs> all right. Um, uh, let's go ahead and open up questions to the audience, guys. If if anybody wants to to um, ask a question of uh, Ashtar and and Ryan, um, Mark, go ahead. Hi, Ashtar. <clears throat> um, I'm. Uh, I was curious. So, are you a collective of Palladian beings, and? This notion of you focusing yourself so you appear to be an individual, is that something that's kind of always going to be necessary? Or as humans get more used to channeling, are we going to be able to interface more with the collective? And does that kind of just require us to be able to understand more subtle energies? Yes, we are a collective. Latent energy and consciousness. And when the collective begins to accept that not all things need to be physically seen, as when these singular appearances of Ashtar begin to dissipate. And thus, we can connect more and more through our energetic selves. So when humans become more attuned and more sensitive to the energies that are around them, where they can get out of the mindset of because I see it, therefore I believe it, we can allow ourselves to come forth as their energetic states. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. 
I'm not sure. Can, can it? Um, I just wanted to go back to when you were talking about holding space. And one of the things, I mean, we're sort of coming more into obviously being in the heart space. But when we kind of foresee what's happening in our environment, um, and you're quite an empathetic person, is there any tips on sort of, I feel like we hold space, well, I hold space and talk to myself, but I also feel a closing off of the heart because I, I, I feel the, uh, I guess I feel, I feel what is happening in the world and all these, you know, things that I can sort of see are going to um, mm, cause a lot of distress for people. So is there a way of like not closing off your heart space and holding that easier? I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> or what you say, I understand. Those who go into war, they purposely close their hearts. They see too much. And so they desensitize themselves. How you can continue to hold space and open your heart without wanting to close it off when you see the pain and the turmoil that is going on is to understand this is a place for all things to happen. There is a balance that must be kept. For it cannot be all light as much as we want to. That is the path and the journey of the collective at this point. For without friction, without conflict, there can be no movement. And we must ask ourselves, as we look at these things that happen, that you can ask yourself, why? Why would these things happen? You're so unspeakable. This is a practice in not closing your heart, but to remain at a more neutral state. This is the balance of life. And remind yourself, Earth itself is an environment. And as souls are exiting and leaving, it is making room for the new star seeds, the new generation to come through. So that they begin to usher in this new earth energy. And remind yourself that the journey continues on and that we do not know the whole story of what is going on and what is being played. We do not know the karmic contracts that are going on in certain areas of the world or individuals. We do not know the whole story. We are only seeing what is shown to us at that immediate time and moment. We do not know the story of even before they took this life on this earth at this time. We do not know what happened in past lives and in past moments. We are only seeing what is shown to us right now. Remind yourself of that and therefore that will get you out of that mindset that everything can be going horrible. These are so many things that are going on are so hurtful to humanity itself. These are unfortunately the lessons that have to be learned be able to grow. And 
So do not close your heart when the pain becomes too much to bear. Dead, remind yourself that I must remain in a place of neutrality. And you can set the intention having their guides, their higher selves, their angels to be there to guide them into the next part of their journey. And to simply just hold space and say, I am sending you light. I'm sending you love. I'm sending you comfort. And then go back to that neutral space. So that then we remain in balance. And that we are never fully submerged those low, dark emotions. We are also never, always constantly in our loving emotions and using that to escape the lower emotion. You must always experience both to experience life at its fullest. You must experience both spectrum. I know, did you have any other follow-up questions? No, that's awesome. Thank you so much. That was great. Thank you. So I have another um, question or comment, maybe followed by a question, is I'm sure you're familiar that, especially in our community, there's been a lot of perhaps not so positive messages coming from different people claiming to be Ashtar or the GFL some sort of fear-based and negative heavy energies using those titles. Uh, perhaps this is some people say CIA PSYOP and there's different conspiracy theories around this. Clearly we can feel your energy and you're not of, of any of that stuff, but what, what would you say, what words of wisdom that you have to help people discern uh, and go beyond the, the names that are being presented out there and, and to connect with the energy? Yes, this is a great lesson in discernment. I know some of you may say, well, they are, they're using your name for such horrible things, painting it. Do not look at it this way. Look at it from a higher perspective. What can this situation teach us? There's always something that many will do to take names, experiences, just as I know many of you in this community know and know how they're beginning to control the narrative of UFO sightings. We must look at it from all angles. This is a lesson in discernment. And also, this is a lesson in trusting what is it that you are feeling as these messages are coming through. If you are feeling that something is off, that whoever is channeling these energies must feel into it. If it is not resonating and something is not feeling right, you have the choice to disconnect from it and to not give it energy. Do not give it life. The more you dwell on it, 
the more we try to combat it, the more energy and life we are breathing into it. So trust what it is that you are feeling. And if you know that there's something else at hand or someone else is trying to begin to plant a seed, and you do not feel it is comfortable. Detach from it. Neutralize your connection from it. Cleanse your connection. You always have free will to choose what energies you connect with. Remind yourselves of that. For you are all powerful beings in yourselves. Remember that you have control of what it is that you wish to connect with energetically and what we choose to give energy into. And so when these things are coming up and you are hearing so many conflicting things, Do not tempt yourself with submerging yourself completely in that energy. Remind yourself, now's a lesson. Take a step back and look at this from different angles and ask, what is it teaching me at this time and moment? Excellent. 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 Um, just want to check in with the channel. Is he doing good to continue on? I'm doing good. All right. So we had a question about, uh, Anunnaki and I know that may not be your expertise, but we're just wondering your perspective that uh, we hear all of these stories of the Anunnaki coming and, and uh, you know, uh, taking gold or enslaving humanity and all this stuff. Um, I'm wondering from your perspective, what the hell happened to the Anunnaki? Where are they now? And have they evolved and moved on? Or are we still dealing with remnants of, of their energies here? Uh, how is that all playing out? We are still dealing remnants of their energy. Hmm. There's not to say, of course, all Anunnaki are like this. There are those who are wanting to reclaim and become who they were before their downfall. And let the Anunnaki be an example of what can come to this earth, to these energies. That is a reminder how one to raise this vibration. And so with that, Anunnaki have made terrible choices and choices that have painted their name for so much and so long. See them. As an example, what not to be, what not to become, and understand that that can be a very dark path to go down. So treat the Anunnaki energies as a reminder what can happen. We are not here to co-create and help our fellow human. You said that, you know, some of those past not to, choices, better choices not to go down. What, what are some of those, if you could just, that maybe perhaps the Anunnaki made that we should uh, be cautious of um, in our uh, 
individual and collective past as humanity. Greed. Greed and always wanting to be ahead of others, wanting to be first. That's where it comes down to. It is that selfishness, thinking about I, the individual, how I, the individual, is impacting the collective. And, and is some of this energy still lingering in the sense that uh, some people, you know, in our, we have our um, governments and society structures, we have this uh, greed that's bleeding through, but um, are they the people that are taking those similar choices that our uh, Anunnaki relatives took? Um, is that bleeding through in a sense through timelines and through um uh un unresolved traumas that that is trying to get resolved here in this earth plane yes unresolved traumas mm -hmm. and also the remaining remnants are trying very hard to hold on to the last bit and so as the collective becomes more aware consciousness becomes more heightened they are just beginning to feel it. And so the pressure of being compiled and collected onto them. They are doing their best to keep this old energy cemented in this plane. And I take it the best that we can do to navigate that suppression or or grasping onto the old ways is just to ignore it completely um for those who may not have the ability to completely ignore it what what can they do to to navigate these energies you don't allow yourself to succumb to it as much as the weight feels on you and how heavy it feels. And you look around, and there seems to be no escape. Do not give in. Always look for that North Star. It will continuously allow you to see that hope and to feel it that things are changing. It is the little steps that you can take every single day, whether it be being nice to someone, donating, helping your fellow neighbor, perhaps even carry groceries, walk someone across the street, simple donation, little steps they encourage collaboration rather than separation. That's how it begins to overcome that energy. I know there are some who in such very terrible environments feel the full power. That is what they want. They want you to just give up and allow the full control. So do not let that happen. Do all the little things that you can, that you have immediate control of. To slowly build that energy up. Those monumental little steps become giant leaps. Even something as simple as stating I will not allow these energy to take control of me. That in itself is already a small step. Claiming your own sovereignty. 
Yes. Laura, uh, you have your hand up. Go ahead and ask your question. Okay. Um, I've been going into some deep hypnosis with someone, and it's taking me to... It's amazing, first of all, that my higher self really takes charge and guides me to places I never imagined. But a lot of those places are dark and have a lot of grief and trauma that aren't necessarily from this life or just deaths, like being a child that froze to death on the tundra. And there's so much emphasis right now on keeping your vibration high and not succumbing to darker energy. Yet my own self is taking me to um, very traumatic and depressive kind of situations and bringing them up in me. Is that just the process of becoming whole? and deepening your compassion to feel within yourself the darkest things you've ever experienced? Does that make sense? Where your higher self is taking you, it is a necessary journey. We understand that this path is not all what some would say, love and light. For us to fully hold empathy and compassion for others, is we must dive into that darkness that is within ourselves. But in doing so, we understand more of ourselves. For your body, your vessel, is not just pure white light. The experiences that it has had also dark. And you cannot ignore those parts of yourself for that is ignoring aspects of yourself. And for us to be whole as one, we must experience both. You cannot ignore either side. So in doing so, as you are experiencing these traumatic events, you're not only clearing out denser energies within yourselves, but you're also holding space for those versions of yourself as well that may not have had that. And so you are helping yourself heal within yourself. Where you are going back in those periods of time, perhaps there was no one for you to be compassionate, to hold space for, for someone to show you empathy in those moments in time. And that is what you are doing now. You're honoring those parts of yourselves. And in doing so, you're clearing that trauma. And therefore, you're beginning to feel more the lightness and releasing much of the heaviness. And yes, in return, that is how now you are able to have compassion for others, to have empathy, and to hold space for others. But now you have personally experienced that pain. So when someone asks of your assistant, you know what that feels like. And so you can truly say, I hear you and I feel you. And now I'm here to hold space for you.
Thank you. Thanks. There's in the chats. There's a, a discussions about the starkness that we just talked that you just talked about, and how some channelers choose not to talk about galactic wars, history, and these kinds of things of a negative context. They tend some just focus on love and light, which depends how you look at it. That's still love and light. It's just you know how you, it's perspective, but maybe it comes across to some people as negative or talking about dark things. Is there something else maybe you could add beyond finding this neutral place to talk about these traumas without having the charge? Is that, uh, is someone who doesn't do that work, are they spiritual bypassing or are they uh, um, just not looking at what is? Or if somebody's looking at that, is are they uh, focusing on the bad too much and they're not focusing on the love and light? Is there a way to navigate those different areas or is it just up to the person and the individual and just what they need to do in their life to move forward? There is much of this so-called spiritual bypassing where one chooses to live only in one spectrum. And to your question, yes, it does depend on the individual. Or because to be in the neutral state, it must be balanced. So as the individual, we do not know where they are coming from. Unless, of course, they share it fully with us. So perhaps an individual has come from nothing but darkness, nothing but density, nothing but negativity. So to balance that, perhaps they must spend a lot more time in the aspects of love and light to see that there is still hope, to see that there is something on the other side. And vice versa. Someone who has grown up always very nurtured and sheltered. They may not have ever experienced the darkness or the negativity. And thus, how can that person fully appreciate and understand perhaps what they have, be in absolute gratitude? And also, how can they say, they feel compassionate, pathetic towards others if they have never experienced that. So that is why I speak of walking on the plane of neutrality. Always aware of both. Never dismissing either. Engaging on your personal path and your experience, perhaps there are moments where you must be more on this side of the spectrum and then coming back, perhaps maybe on this side, to understand certain aspects and vantage point. And as we are accepting that there is both and that we are always engaged a little bit each side, that allows us be better at being not so energetically charged when we are countered with the conflicting energy. We always are reminded that there is another side to this and is not always my side or my view. And the individuals always have different perspectives based on their experiences and their environments. And to be in a neutral state allows us to be open and to respond and to not react. Yeah, that's why I interview all these different channelers so we can uh, have a buffet, so to say, so everybody can find who resonates with them, where they're at in their process. And uh, definitely not one one size fits all type of situation. Thank you. Thank you for, for your words of wisdom. We could squeeze one more question if anybody wants to ask another question. I think um, some light language wants to come through. Oh, great. Yeah. 
Okay, let's let's end with light language and then we'll bring Ryan back. So I asked what the intention of this light language that wants to come through. And it is helping to heal some that are in this call tonight. Perhaps some that are maybe going through something. It wants us to help clear a bit of its energies and to help clear out some emotions. You the the asi iki si achi itum sala iki si chi iti no wa utu si la unti si ichi unti kara itu soto uchi nara asi satu un i chara itu sala Aki chi tu sara untu si itu ara untu cha la ese e ni kuru utu cha ti iti na u shala unti ise e kuchu solo untu ye unti ya ashala e ti satu un ikiri ichi na la isi tu la sa a Chila itu sa in itu atea saya un korati ichi na osara un sala iti in da un tu so un chura sat ite sa chara un iti iti kara un tu sa ichi sa tu inki che un tu la ishe Intia upu satu utri si i ta unta ya uchikati sa un sa un sa un si chi i la unto ya tu ichi inti i la unko cha la ose i tu un ichi para ose tu upar isi Sata unta ukuru chala se e wotu sotu ya untu ya u se apura ichi da la un utu iti ichi ti 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 Last bits of that light language. Because what I was feeling was that they were helping to open the heart space for some. Thank you. Thank you. I felt uh, uh, a bit of Lemurian energy in there. I don't know if that's uh, just my mind playing tricks on me, but what, what was... It's been a long Lumerian and an Octorian energy. Okay. Sweet. See, I'm getting it. I'm catching up. <laughs> oh man. Wow. Well, thank you. That was, that was quite a, uh, good nuggets to chew on for a while there. Yeah. So good information coming through. Appreciate that. Yeah. Th thank you. Thank you for, you know, giving me the opportunity and, you know, Ashtar to come through as well. Yeah. Were you familiar uh, with that uh, transmission? I'll put links down in below, but uh, that British transmission that came through from the Ashtar Command in 1970. No, oh, um, I'm not familiar with it. Now I'm curious. I want to go look it up. Yeah, yeah. So
fun. It's it's a you know it's 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 as a UFO research researcher, it's um it's nice to have that kind of physical confirmation sometimes because especially at that time, uh, we didn't have you know hacking technology and stuff as well as we do now, and it was very much a random uh localized just one it was just a one thing but nobody can explain it it's still like a mystery today of like how who was able to have the technology to do that and nobody claimed that you know they were the ones and it was around the same time when crop circles were just starting maybe it was before the crop circle phenomenon it was in that area so there's uh actually i first heard about it from colin andrews who coined the phrase crop circle yeah back in back in the day he's an interesting guy to follow so tangent there any questions for ryan i know you ryan you said you were gonna you had like a uh, kind of a little special uh, how do people find you if and what could we offer them if they wanted to have a session yeah um so you can find me i'm gonna drop it in the um the message uh so my instagram is the dot sacred dot journey um so that will be you can find me there okay sorry my typing is very very slow right now uh, don't worry about it. i i i have it i'll, I'll grab it okay cool it. cool yeah i'll put it in there and uh and you said there was a uh, mention in one of our emails a uh, uh, promotion yeah yeah so for um all those on the call um as a thank you for hopping on and trusting me with this space um, it's a coupon code. So if you are interested in my services, um, it's 33% off. And um, in my um, Instagram, I have like a LinkedIn page that you can click on. And, you know, and if you have questions in general, um, always feel free to reach out to me. And, you know, if the services, when you read it, you feel called to, but want to know more, um, you can always talk to me on social media and then we can always schedule like a 15 minute call too, just to discuss also as well. Well, I definitely, uh, you know, each time I hear you, uh, do your channelings, I'm the resonating, you know, more and more. So I, I feel you're definitely, you got the magic uh, fairy dust channeling fairy dust sprinkled on you. So, <laughs> um, I'm sure in no time you'll be, uh, up there with the others, you know, we didn't get a chance to talk to Kryon today, but uh, no. it's okay. We'll 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 let Lee do that. I have been talking to him actually about doing an episode, so we'll do that. Oh, one. nice, very nice. Um, so, but but at some other point, I'd love to have you back on just to, you know, compare Kryon notes if that's a possibility. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be very fun and interesting to yeah. do. I'm, I'm totally up for that. You know, we have to also respect these as you did respectfully in the beginning mention um you know your respect in in honoring of the crying energy and lee and same with bashar and others i've been talking to andrew who used to channel elon and bashar around when daryl was getting into it. I'm so curious to hear his story and how he stopped channeling he uh just he was channeling bashar and put up a ton of content and then just stopped or it switched over to Elon and then 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 it stopped. So anyways, hopefully we'll have interesting notes to compare with people channeling different or I'm sorry, different people channeling the same entities. This is going to be an ongoing <laughs> subject that we're going to address here and demystify that that idea in 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 uh hopefully in a good way. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I think the crayon thing is kind of cool too. So uh, lots of thank yous. People are are, are saying thank you. Uh, we we have a um, sort of an after talk talk that we do amongst members. Uh, you're welcome to join Ryan. Uh, you're, you're probably like me, have to go pee. <laughs> so, uh, but we'll go ahead and shut this one down, and then uh, I'll start the uh, I'll start the the new recording. So, thanks again, Ryan. Uh, and we'll hopefully we'll see you here and recommend everybody to to look Ryan up on his Instagram links will be below and definitely book a session. He's awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Once again, thank you to everyone here. Thanks for tuning in. I uh, hope you like this interview. We actually do this every week on my membership portal page. 
And you can access it through interviewwithed.org or uh, click on the link uh, somewhere in here. I'll put a link and uh, come over and join us. You too can ask questions. Every week we have new special guests and you get to ask questions directly to the channelers and to the beans that they channel. So see you in the portal.